This is unironically the fourth time I'm recording this intro because I just can't keep my mouth shut when I actually should. Uh, because I, it took me only two hours to write this entire story. Two hours. Anyways, before we go right into this, this is a Tomura Shigaraki story, my darlings. And I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. But before we go right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end. Like or dislike and comment something, anything down below. This way you ensure that my video gets put into the YouTube algorithm. And the better my standing in the YouTube algorithm, the more people watch my stuff and the more money I make. And uh, I, I, I'm desperate. Come on, help a guy out. Uh, I'm also completely in support of you sharing my videos, making fan art, any kind of fan art, the looter the better. And uh, if you want, you can take clips of my videos and re-upload them on TikTok. Just please credit me and link to my videos, okay? That's all you need to do. All right, let's get right into the show, shall we? Blood, violence, and death. Women, men, soldiers, villains, fools, and corpses. You have come today to watch them all battle to the end here in Cirque de Batage. You bowed before your patrons. And today, it will be my personal pleasure to give you a special treat. A wonderful, rare treat. You laughed hysterically, and the crowd roared. You turned and pointed behind you. The League of Villains was so kind to donate us a real-life normal. The creature banged against its cage like a frightened animal. And the people in the audience went wild. You could have sworn some of them were fuming with excitement at the thought of this bulking creature cannibalizing the first human it encountered. Who is ready to see a savage beast of a man tear our lovely contestants limb from limb? And who will bet it all on our fighters? It's a gamble I'd be willing to take. Once again you laughed as you spread your arms, drowning in happiness as the roars around you got louder. Human depravity, a constant that you could always count on. People like to see themselves as above violence, lust and greed, especially with heroes running about. Claiming to do heroics because that's just what people do. No, there wasn't such a thing as a good person left living in this world. They would never make it past the age of 16 without the entire worldview challenged to the breaking point where they would become just like the rest of them. And that's where you came in. The thing that was keeping society together. An outlet for human instincts. A place where humans could be the animals that they so desperately wanted to be. You could give them that in your grotesque circus, hidden within the Kamino Ward sewer system of all places. There, hidden away in a city of homeless, you created an underground entertainment empire where people acted out their most vile fantasies. All for your own profit and amusement. And the centerpiece of it was a large wooden structure built up to the ceiling of the sewers. A circus of blood and gore. Your circus where people young and old could come to watch people with powerful quirks sodomize each other. There are only two rules. One, never take your mask off. And two, 
as a contestant, you were not allowed to hurt the audience. And if they did, you had a special punishment prepared for that. Oftentimes, the viewers of these events came in the hopes that that would actually happen. Admittance as a contestant was free, of course, and their pay was a percentage of the bets people took in their favor. And as an audience member, you were given an iron mask that covered 80% of your face. Only mouth and eyes were revealed by it. This was mostly because of your quirk, hedonistic gaze. Through simply looking directly into a person's eyes, you could make their body exhume large amounts of serotonin, dopamine, oxycotin, and endorphins. And depending on the mental state of a person, this meant they could go berserk, guaranteeing that even a one-sided match between contestants would still make people come with excitement. Another reason for the masks was anonymity. Since there was a surprisingly large amount of celebrities you catered to, you were convinced that at least a quarter of all children born by the rich and famous were a result of orgies you had organized. And who are you to judge a child for that? After all, a poor man could force themselves on a rich, young superstar, giving the man's child a fortunate childhood that the kid would definitely not experience if it were the other way around. After you finished typing up the crowd, you made one last twirl, making sure to look into as many eyes around you as you could before proudly strutting out of the sand-covered arena. Your destination was your very own private lounge, where you dined with your VIPs during the spectacle. And today's VIPs were none other than the entire League of Villains. Or at least, what was left of them after their scuttles with the heroes and Yakuza. As soon as you entered, you heard them applaud you. I've been looking forward to this day, said one of them, a guy with burnt scars all over his body. You clapped into your own hands excitedly. Oh, please don't flatter me. You gave me a gift most kindly. You continued further into the carpeted room until you reached a window that looked down at the arena. Already two naked men with physical quirks were brutalizing each other with their fists in the sandpit. I hope the big guy wins, giggled a little blonde girl next to you. They're both big! No, they're not, said a masked guy behind her. You crossed your arms and smiled. You have quite an interesting ensemble, Tomura. You mused and turned to face their leader. The white-haired man scoffed. Whatever. I'm not here for this massacre. You raised an eyebrow. You here for business? Oh, just like me. But that doesn't mean we can't enjoy the bloodshed, can we? You chuckled dramatically. Besides, who comes to a circus to talk about money? You pointed towards a door to your right. Stuff like that is better talked about in private and- OH MY GOD HE ripped THIS COCK OFF! Tomura, can we come here every day? Shouted the girl and you chuckled. Gently petting the girl's head. I like her. You said seductively towards Tomura. She isn't for sale, wench. You scoffed. Oh, Shiggy, my dear. You should be glad I'm in a generous mood today. The last person to call me wench was- Quite literally gutted by my beloved audience. Seriously, though, shouted the blonde. When was that? You scratched over your chin and thought. Mm, about two months ago. The girl's eyes widened. That was when I first told you about this place, Tomura. I could have been there. Shigaraki sighed. Can we please go now? 
Five minutes later, you found yourself in your quiet closet. At least that's how you called your meeting room. This place reeks. He complained after sitting down opposite to you. I remember you quite liking it here. I'm disappointed. Tomura looked away. So, what business did you want to discuss? The man sighed. I... He blushed. You had seen this face before. Many times, in fact. With a dramatic sigh, you put a hand in front of your mouth. Mr. Shigaraki, if I didn't know better, I'd be thinking you took a liking to me. This happened surprisingly often with your business partners. Men tended to be more generous after you had used your quirk and assets on them. It wasn't their nature, after all. Tomura was different, though. You had known him for a while. His caretaker... All for one had been a patron of yours. For many years, in fact. You practically raised Tomura together. No, he said almost too quickly in response to you. I simply demand to make a cut if we are to supply Nomus to you on a regular basis. You felt insulted. Tomura, you said softly. Tomura, you said softly, you know I have trouble declining you. He blushed again. But I'm afraid I have two this time. Your Nomus are contestants, like everyone else. If I were to treat them any different, my patrons would think I'm rigging the fights. And then we would both lose money. You smiled. Tomura, you understand that just as much as I do. Your smile turned deviant. What is the real reason you wanted to enter my closet? Your eyes met and he groaned as his brain overreacted to your quirk. In truth, he had been playing this game since the beginning. His father figure was a very well-paying customer of yours. It would have been bad for business if you didn't take advantage of that. But you had to admit, the boy could be a sweetheart if he wanted to. Tomura inhaled sharply, with an embarrassed chuckle he combed through his hair. I... I'm not coming on to you. His eyes betrayed him. Licking your lips, you placed both hands on the table, separating the two of you, and leaned forward. Oh, are you now? You said seductively. He looked away. Fine, he growled. Fine what? The boy shivered. I feel something, okay? You chuckled. <laughs> Felt lonely, honey. He made a noise somewhere between a squeak and a grunt. You gnashed your teeth in the light. You didn't hate men. You absolutely loved them and their predictability. You crawled towards him on the table, taking off your own iron mask. When you were just mere inches away from his face, Remember? He used to call me mommy. Your eyes met and his body began to shiver. You are such a cute little child, Tomura. With one hand he reached down to his crotch. And you have grown so much. Uh, th this is wrong. He pressed for his clenched teeth, and you scoffed. Oh, baby, the rich elite pays me millions for private events, where they can do whoever they want, however they want, and ugh, whatever they want. And we aren't even blood-related, so 
It's fine in my book. You winked as he tried to look away, but his own body refused to follow orders. All he could see now was your wild hair and face right in front of him. He was breathing heavily at this point. Uh, Ringmaster, I... Shush, he interrupted. Call me mommy. For a split second, he confided with himself. I love you, mommy. You acted quick like a spider ready to capture its prey. He screamed as you injected a needle into his neck, shooting a blue glowing liquid straight into his veins. And for a moment he was paralyzed. And you moved in closer to his ear. Quirk suppressant. You can touch me all you want now. You chuckled darkly. I was generous. You have 40 minutes. Uh, I'll only need 30, he whispered. You suppressed the need to laugh hysterically. He wouldn't make it past 10. The Nomu entered the arena, its thick, oiled muscles glistening in the light of the arena. Toga jumped up from her chair. There he is, finally! She shouted excitedly. Behind her, Dobby stood with his arms crossed. I've bet a whole bunch that he won't make it past the fifth combatant. Toga giggled. <laughs> I think he can beat all of them. She said, smiling. Just then, the Nomu lunged forward at its first opponent. Some guy with a telekinesis quirk who tried to keep the monstrosity at bay by using rocks he had carried in a bag as projectiles. But the leak had learned from their past mistakes. The beast had not only shock nullification inside of it, but also a quirk called Berserk, which meant the longer the Nomu remained active in battle, the stronger it would become. Especially when his wounds began to mount. Toga laughed. I'm going to tell Tomura our fight has started. Happily, the blonde skipped to the door you and her boss had vanished behind a few minutes ago. Not thinking of knocking, she immediately opened the door. Tomura, our fight has... She stopped as her eyes widened, seeing you naked on top of an equally naked Tomura. You grinned and covered your chest with one arm as you turned towards her. Sweetie, would you please close the door? Uh, her name is Toga, groaned the embarrassed Tomura, and you chuckled. <laughs> Toga, honey, mind closing the door? The shocked girl didn't know how to properly reply. Uh, Thing. Opting to simply shut it and return to her seat. <laughs> you missed the normal biting the guy's head clean off, said Dawi with an amused smile. Mm -hmm. Answered Toga. What? You luckily like have seen something disturbing. They're doing it. Dabi blinked. Huh? The girl looked up at the edgy chicken nugget. The Ringmaster and Tomura are doing it. <laughs>